Garage Band, Garage Band Weekly, Garage Band, Garage Band Weekly, Garage Band, Garage Band Weekly. Need an answer to your question? John, do you have a suggestion? Seems to bounce in our more knowledge. I think he might have gone to Garage Band College. What he doesn't know, we'll try and find out. So join the chat and give him a shout. Pete John. Pete John. Garage Band Weekly. Yeah, there's nothing more humble than having your own theme song sing your name over and over again. Welcome to Garage Band Weekly, my friends. Uh, this is our show all about Garage Band creating music on Apple devices and uh, everything in between. On today's show, we're going to be looking at Logic Pro for iPad. Yeah, we got uh, a brand new version of Logic Pro for iPad. I've already put out a bunch of videos about the new version, but if you haven't seen those, we'll be diving in hands-on because I haven't actually kind of tried to create anything yet. And um, spoiler alert, we've got the guitar going on here. So we're going to play some guitar in Logic Pro for iPad, which I haven't really done. Like some good electric guitar rocking out since uh, way back in Song Timber. Uh, so it's been a while. It's been a while. We've got some news and notes as well. Uh, we are going to say good day to the folks who are kind enough to be here live and tell you a few other things about what's going on in and around the world of music creation because there's a lot going on. We're probably going to go on a little bit of a rant here today because uh, there's some things that have been grinding my gears that I'd love to have a chat to you about. However, before we do all of that, if you would like to support me and the work that I do around here and you love yourself a bit of Garage Band, you might want to go and check out this, which is the Garage Band iOS FAQ, <laughs> which you can access at studiolivetoday.com slash Garage Band. Here it is. It's my FAQ. You can check out my $10 garage band course for a quick fire quick start to garage band or you can check out all the different communities all the different playlists of information and tutorials that you can get your teeth sunk into uh, and uh, if you would like to go there you can also go to studiolivetoday.com if uh, you don't want to go all the way to there and that will have all the links to all the things the gear guide the communities the videos the everything now uh, before we dive into the news and the notes of the week let's say g'day shall we to the folks who are kind enough to be here live uh, hello to many vibes g'day to you hello danny gable g'day mark bro ashley hm hello barry glenn g'day rockin pneumonia robert latzer is here emilio gamboa leon hello to you pj that's what he used to get called in my um in my previous life <laughs> when I worked for a corporate overlord. Uh, g'day Gregory O'Sullivan as well. Thank you all, Eileen uh, Leni Perez. Thank you everyone, and Folk and Bluesa, g'day to you. If, you, if you're here and you wanna say g'day, uh, feel free to do so. Hello, dear Monarchy, what's up, my friend? Yeah, I love my, love my tool shirt, love tool. Some would say I am a tool. No, um, love, love a bit of tool. If you do have a question, we are interactive. We've got an hour to sit here and hang out and I'll be ranting and raving and carrying on. But if you've got specific things that you want to know about, why don't you just chuck a big Q in front of your question and uh, I'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you may have. All right, news and notes of the week. The big news and notes is that Logic Pro has had an update both on Mac as well as iOS. So if you have a Logic Pro on the iPad, you will know now that we have version 1.1, a big version update that's got some cool new things which we'll go into detail about later, but we're talking a 32-bit float recording, we're talking recording into the sampler, we're talking the ability to drag and drop multiple files and use split view with our iPad. So all of those things, super good and uh, going to be a good thing for uh, for folks like me and like you who are creating uh, creating music here in Logic Pro. The other thing that was a little bit kind of left a field that I didn't really see coming in was uh, that there is actually uh, an update to GarageBand as well. So yeah, if you didn't catch it, our mate Patrick over at Funnily enough, the GarageBand guide has done an update. So the Mac version is up to version 10.4.9. If you want to go and check out Patrick's version, you can jump on over. There it is, 10.4.9 update. What's new? It's a nice five and a half minute video because Patrick respects your time. 
he doesn't go, oh, how can how do I squeeze an eight minute and one second video out of this topic so that I can throw a mid roll ad in? He's not that kind of YouTuber. He's the kind of guy that says, here it is. Here's just the facts. And plenty of you have already watched this one uh, very popular video because even though GarageBand came out, their, their headline for GarageBand Mac was uh, stability improvements and bug fixes. Guess what? They actually added in some decent stuff in there. They've added the two latest GarageBand iOS packs. And I share Patrick's absolute <laughs> lack of understanding of why they can't just put the same packs in GarageBand iOS and GarageBand Mac at the same time. There's got to be some sort of technological reason or they just want to segment and separate out the process somehow. I don't know. The other thing is that they've updated some of the UI in there. So they've uh, updated, they've moved away from the, the old skeuomorphic. Let's see if I can find the spot where, where Patrick shows this in the video. So yeah, the, the new icons. So uh, where are we? Let's just see if this will pop it up here for us. Come on, Patrick. We want to hear your dulcet tones, mate. So, yeah. So, see how we've got these new, almost neon kind of outline icons? They've actually been updated. You can still have access to the old sort of skeuomorphic icons, like the the those ones. Like the Actually, no, that's not even it. So, yeah, these are the new, new style of icons. They match the ones that are in Logic Pro. Uh, if you recall, previously the GarageBand one had icons more like this, like the actual instrument. So, they're still all in there, but it'll default to the Logic style one. So, they're kind of trying to make the garage band to logic transition even more smooth for folks that maybe aren't already uh, logic users they want to get them on board so that they can go from garage band to logic in the future uh, a few other little bug fixes and lots of accessibility stuff so that's probably the coolest thing through logic pro for ipad through garage band ios and now um, mac uh, garage band Lots of accessibility improvements. So folks who are vision impaired or who have accessibility needs, mobility uh, and the like, yeah, they're, they're actually coming to the party and trying to uh, try to help folks out, which I think is a good thing in my humble opinion. Uh, an update to GarageBand. They must be breaking out the snow snowmobiles in it. Yeah, I know. And it, again, it wasn't even just bugs. So, so Patrick, because Patrick's the, the guy he is, he dived in, went to, uh, went under the hood and found out that there are some actual changes. Uh, the value of Logic for $200 is absolutely insane. People say to pay 200 for a single synth or an analog emulator plug-in. We get absolute powerhouse with infinite possibilities. Correct. And that's the thing. If you compare it to, and uh, I know that Logic Pro for iPad is a subscription, but if you compare it to something like a Pro Tools subscription or even buying something like Studio One, the value you get for, for Logic is ridiculous. And let's not forget the value for GarageBand being free. And I know every time I say GarageBand is free, there'll be someone who want to jump on and say, well, actually, Johns, GarageBand isn't so much free as you have to pay a very high price for a device that costs too much money, and then you get it included. So I guess we'll call GarageBand a bundled application as opposed to a free application. But hey, if you've got an iPhone anyway, or an iPad anyway, basically free, right? Hello, Rodriguez Bailey. Thank you for being here. Fat Panda Cat says, Logic on the Mac has always stood out as great value, especially compared to competing DAWs. Spot on. Absolutely. And uh, as I use Logic Pro on iPad more and more, uh, I'm enjoying that as well. Uh, I'm just going to do a quick uh, a quick check here because um, a as it tends to happen, yeah, it's, it's still the case. I've uh, I set up everything. It was all working hunky dory, perfect just before the show, and uh, then I went to go live. And if you know anything about the HDMI to USB adapters, they are the flakiest things on the planet. And uh, mine has now decided to crap out. So this could make it a very interesting show. There could be less actual creating being shown here, and uh, even more ranting. So if you like if you like ranty Johns and you want to hang out and just talk about things instead of actually showing things, this might be the show for you. Because uh, it's yeah, <laughs> it's not working right now. I'm going to turn it off and on because uh, that's the 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 usual fix here is to unplug everything because uh, usually it's either just a connection that's gone dodgy or a loose connection or something. But uh, yeah, don't don't be a don't be a YouTuber that relies on the gear. And by the way. The, the reason that we have unreliable gear here uh, for our HDMI connections is that technically, if we want to get all like actual technical here on this, I shouldn't be able to send my iPad screen out via HDMI. 
Because it's got HDMI, it's got uh, the H, what is it, HCP, some sort of copy protection thing that means it can't actually show that on a screen. So thankfully, the uh, the adapters that I use are uh, the less than um, uh, brand name ones that you get from eBay for 20 bucks, and they will usually work until they don't. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll I've turned the iPad off, we're going to turn it back on, we're going to try again. In a jiffy, but uh, yeah, like I say, be prepared. It may just be a lot of chatting with Johns here today on this week's show. Uh, Dear Monarchy said, I just finished a song on GarageBand. Big thanks to Pete, but it's called <laughs> Tim Shit Syndicate. So I don't know when the video is done if it's okay for Pete's music show. There's no cursing in it, just a name. Well, the fa- here's the thing. I figure that if you can drop the S-bomb on like 7.30 p.m. commercial TV and like 8 a.m. commercial radio, and that's definitely the case here in Australia, don't know what it's like in other countries, I think I think shit's basically the new crap. <laughs> Who would have thought that you'd come to GarageBand Weekly to learn about cursing? But I honestly think so, to the point where YouTube barely even bats an eyelid unless you come in and just drop 10 s bombs in the first it's all about the first minute or two i think with youtube if you come in there and you start to drop in the s bombs straight away it's going to punish you if you uh, if you do it later in the show then uh, yeah it's usually okay i've still got nothing here folks it's still not coming through on the usb so um yeah could could be a could be an interesting show there could be some some quick fixes and it was again it was working just before because of course it was uh first you need to have that 200 dollars, but exchange rate in other countries means it's not as good option as it may seem in the us yeah so here in australia i paid 319 dollars. i want to say let's let's check that because i do i do have my screen working here so I can jump over to here. Let's check uh, Logic Pro. I'm pretty sure it's 319 Australian. Uh, we'll jump in here, Logic Pro for Mac, iPad. Uh, and it, the cool thing is you do get a free trial. And unlike free trials for other software, this is one of the other reasons that I think Apple are cooler than some, you don't get no cut down first version, stripped down version, can't save your projects, can't use all your plugins, put a watermark on it or, or audio watermark as some things are doing, which is just stupid. But um, yeah, you get the free, the entire thing for 30 days. So you know exactly how it works. Uh, oh, two ninety nine ninety nine. See, that's a weird thing. Sometimes you pay sort of a slightly extra premium. So I've actually did pay for Logic Pro. So two ninety nine, ninety nine. So I hear you. And uh, unfortunately, the way the economy is going these days, there's not. Uh, it's not quite as easy as it. Um, yeah. And uh, by the way, to, to finish the thought on that one, yeah, we'll we'll play it. Uh, again, you, we probably won't open the show with it because I probably can't say that I can't drop the uh, drop of S's and F bombs in the start of the show. But uh, yeah, it, it'll absolutely be considered. We had some cool songs. So we had Overgoat on the show yesterday, and they were dropping the F bombs. But again, they were they were well placed, and they were adding to the art. The way I look at it is if it's just for the sake of it, and this is the same thing. I think that people that swear all the time, you know, you do you. Um, it, it's the era of you do you in Studio Live Today land. So you do you if you want to swear, then go for it. But I think it actually reduces it. Like I I re- rarely swear, but when I do, it has impact because I think I do it uh, appropriately. I don't know. Um, yeah, you do. And I think that's the problem. Unfortunately, if you swear all the time, the, what you have to then say to have any shock value is so much higher. I like to set the bar low so that I can just jump in there. <laughs> They're interchangeable these days. Exactly. Uh, the irony of, uh, of, uh, of crap becoming is great. Yes, I know. I know. G'day, Princess LDG. We're talking about swearing. Welcome to the show. <laughs> <laughs> Young impressionable ears. <laughs> uh, what else do we have in the news and notes? Because it could be a news and notes filled show here, folks, just quietly. Yeah, in fact, we'll, we'll talk about a, a couple of other things. One is that speaking, speaking of Patrick at the Garage Band Guide, I'd like to tell you about something fun that is coming up soon. So uh, I'm just going to search out my name here and Garage Band Weekly. 200. So you might have noticed this is episode number 197. We've been doing this caper for uh, nigh on four years now, uh, GarageBand Weekly, and it's always my funnest show because it's 
kind of the least organized show. You, you know exactly what you to expect. The happy hour, Pete's going to sit with his guitar and play music for an hour. Your music live, you've got two hours of independent music. And yeah, lots of variety in that music. Uh, but yeah, the Garage Band Weekly has always been a little bit of a hot mess. And uh, I, I, we go with the theory of embrace the jank. And I love it, the jankier, the better. So the fact that my iPad's, you know, carked it and we won't be able to do that, guess what? We pivot. We do something different. We talk about something else. So that's the way we roll. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, it, it is it is, uh, it is, a thing. Uh, let's jump over here. So look at what's happening. <laughs> I decided to embrace the jank and uh, I grabbed some, uh, I grabbed an AI cartoon creator the jankiest one I could find, and uh, it's it's me and Patrick, and uh, apparently cartoons think that we look almost identical because let's be honest, we both rock the same haircut, the same kind of beard, and uh, he had glasses. So uh, yeah, that's the that's the Patrick and uh, and Pete Garage Band Weekly two hundred. So I say all that to say that Patrick will be on uh, Garage Band Weekly two hundred. So we'll be talking about. What's happened? So four years is a long time in GarageBand land, but probably the last four months has been massive. In terms of we went from only having GarageBand iOS to having Logic Pro on iPad, and we had a, a heap of updates in terms of the functionality of what we can actually do. 32-bit float on an iPad for the first time, for instance, is, is a small thing, but it's actually kind of massive when you think about it. The M1, think think four years ago. What was four years ago? Well, it was 2019. I didn't own a Mac. <laughs> I started GarageBand Weekly and I didn't even own a freaking Mac. So that's how much has changed in four years. M1, M2, M3, iPads with M1, iPads with M2, iPhone 12, 13, 14, and 15. Like, things are moving fast. People complain, and I'll talk about complaining and uh, dramatic complaints in a moment. People complain that things are, everything's just the same, and Apple just keep releasing the same thing again and again, and oh, it's so boring, there's no new features, there's nothing cool, oh, it's just a giant ad. Look, I don't disagree with a lot of that, but the thing is, it's already awesome. And uh, the expectations are so high now. I think uh, because um, I, I blame putting a man on the moon. What is the old adage? It's like uh, as soon as we as soon as we put a man on the moon, everyone's compared all future technological improvements to putting a man on the moon. And now anything we do, like I don't know, slightly improving a chip so that that already lightning fast computer now runs twenty percent faster. People are like, yeah, twenty percent, whatever, man. It's like yeah. We need to maybe re, re, uh, re look at ourselves. Uh, Dave Fox, I saw Dave Fox on the Facebook um, yesterday, and I was like, we haven't seen that adorable little fox, uh, fox emoji in the chat. So uh, Fox me, Dave has arrived. Good to see you, mate. Always good to see a bit of Dave Fox. It's great that this time of the year we've got. Um, uh, our UK viewers and listeners can actually tune into more of the shows because we do these. Look, I, uh, I do these at a time that is optimal for the US and Canada. And look, it works for me because it's it's in the morning for me and it's in the afternoons and the evening. That's when we usually put the shows out for uh, the fact that most of the viewers of this channel are in the US and Canada. Just the way it is. And uh, unfortunately, the UK and the European folks get the rough end of the stick. I get the shaft. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I say all that to say it's good to see some of the folks that we don't always see. Shadeepin, hello to you. Hope you are doing well. The, the M1 is still awesome. I'm still rocking my M1 Mac Mini with the absolute base configuration. It still does a decent job. iPad with M3 coming next year. Yeah, what do you reckon? What, what, let's speculate, since we have no uh, ability to do anything on the actual screen today with the iPad, let's speculate. What do you think is coming in uh, in the new, in the future, in in the future of um, iPad? Mm, do we, is the Air doomed? Does the iPad Air even need to exist anymore? It seems redundant because there's, it, it, what has it got? Like, it's got USB-C. Well, guess what? The base iPad now has USB-C, so that's redundant. It has the M1, so I guess that's the only differentiator. But then if you're going to go the M1 or even the M2 chip, why wouldn't you go the Pro? Who's that Air for? It's for people that don't want to quite go for the Pro, but they do. It's like the old MacBook 13-inch. So they killed the old MacBook Pro 13-inch. 
I wouldn't be surprised if they kill the MacBook, uh, the iPad Air. I just don't think it has a, a place. Yeah, and then M4 will come after that, and M5, and M6. Yeah, so that, and that's the thing. I mean, I think I actually put the title of um, of one of my shows. It's like uh, Apple release M3, and then it's like um, two plus one equals three because that's what they're going with. Except sometimes they skip. No iPhone nine, no iPhone two. Yeah, sometimes they skip a number just to keep you on your toes. But it could be worse. It could be like Xbox who named their first Xbox, Xbox, their second Xbox, Xbox 360, and their third Xbox, Xbox One. And now I think it's called like Xbox Type S and Type Y. I don't even know. I can't follow it. I'm a PlayStation guy because one, two, three, four, five. Simple man with simple needs. Hello, Emilio. Thank you for being here. Uh, is that way for everything by Apollo 13? People were unimpressed by men walking on the moons. Exactly. And the space program kind of wound down because it was... They're like, oh, we've already done that. Just let's just send a, just send a monkey next time. Whatever. Uh, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you. Yeah. Feel free to hit like if you like what's going on around here. Um, I think the Air should, in fact, replace the regular iPad. Yeah, the problem is education. The, the air is too expensive. So the reason, you might be thinking, why does Apple still have the base level iPads and these really low end iPads with barely enough storage to do anything with? The answer is the education sector. The education sector buy a metric butt ton of iPads and they need the absolute base level iPads. So that's why when you come in here to iPad, you got the 10th generation but you can still buy the ninth generation. And the reason is that all the schools are still buying these. So 329, I think the schools probably pay about 2 250 when they buy in bulk. So these are still produced because again, 10.2 inch display uh, supports the Apple Pencil first gen. It's got the A13 Bionic. My daughter's got one of these. They're actually really good. It's all that a lot of people need. But um, yeah, that, and that's why. And then the 10th gen, I think you're probably right, Mark, that this is now so close. So 10.9 inch screen on the, the iPad 10th gen. These are now so close to the iPad Air. I think they'll still keep making an absolute base model education version. And then the iPad Air and the iPad 11th gen uh, will be like merged into one. And whether they go the Air naming or whether they go the... They might even keep the Air naming just to say iPad is now going to be absolute base level, Air, and then Pro, which is kind of what it should be, although it wasn't really originally. It's been weird. Um, question, is the 11-inch iPad regular going to start using the M1 chip? Yeah, that's a really good question because as we see here, we this is still running the A14. So the only real difference between the A chip and the M chip there's actually not, not much of a difference. So the A14 is basically the same as the M1 anyway. The A15 is like the M2 and the A16 is like the M3. So it, it's just that one's optimized for mobile and one's optimized more for desktop style processing, which is why you won't see the M chip in the iPhone. Plus it's bigger because it's got more power. It does more of the computational stuff, more of the graphics processing, more of the machine learning stuff that is not really needed for a mobile device. So I don't think so. I think I was actually surprised when we saw the M1 and M2 go into the iPad, especially the iPad Air, because the iPad Pro, yep, yeah, fair enough. It's a pro, pro workflow, put it in the Pro. But in terms of the uh, the regular iPad, I don't think so. I would say that they're going to continue using because they basically can just keep reusing. So the way it works, if you weren't aware, the new Pro chip basically becomes last year. So Mark Bro, who's here in the chat, he bought the new iPhone 15. And the good thing about that is you, you don't need to go to the Pro because you get the Pro chip from last year. So they basically keep upcycling the chips to the next version. So I think all we'll see that will happen with the 11th uh, generation iPad is it'll probably go to the A15 Bionic chip if they follow the same progression that they've had before. Uh, hello to Tremor Bior. I hope you are doing well. Uh, ninth gen is being phased out as we speak. Yeah, yeah, and that's the thing. It will go because it's lightning based. So the the new budget one will eventually be a USB C based, like the tenth gen. Uh, but yeah, I think there'll still be sort of the the market for them. It's like a lot of things. There's this. Uh, it's like um for the longest time, remember like eight millimeter video tape and like audio, like compact cassette audio tape. That only survived because uh, airlines used it. 
so airliners used it to um to to play back the in-flight entertainment. So you know how you used to have, for those that are old enough, remember you used to get those stethoscope style headphones that plugged in, they were actually like a an air tube arrangement. I don't quite know the technology. You plug those in. Well, those were just linked up to literally like a, a tape deck that just had a whole bunch of cassette tapes. In it. Um, uh, who is it? Techmoan uh, did a, a recent uh, video about it. So if you're not aware of Techmoan, um, yeah, it, it's, it's so... I think things like the compact cassettes and, and videotapes were still used for that. And I think that's the thing in education. A lot of older stuff keeps getting used in education. I know from, from me back at school, man, we were using like Mac SEs that were about eight years old. And uh, back in my primary school, we had Commodore 64s when, uh, yeah, they were definitely very outdated at the time. So, yeah, it's a, it's a thing. Um, what else did we have in... Uh, I, I have a rant to do. I didn't bring water. And uh, I need to do some quick checks to try and get things sorted here. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm, I'm going to go to my my backup plan here, and uh, I'm gonna, I'm going to play a song. So this is a this is how we roll again. Embrace the jank. Uh, I'm going to throw a video on here for two and a half minutes just while I try and do a little bit of quick check setup stuff here. So uh, uh, plug in, unplug stuff, and plug it back in and see if we can get things working. Uh, so why don't you sit back and enjoy this one? A little stroll along the uh, river and uh, my song my song timber song from last year called Grown. I'll be back in uh, in a couple of minutes. Never one for going hard Never had a fear of missing out Never happy in a crowd And I know I'm not the only one I'm a grown-ass man Please take me home I've done all that I can Please take me home Never had to see the light Never had an urge for starting fight Kinda happy on my own And I know I'm surely not alone Cause I just don't have a plan Please take me home I've had all I can stand Please take me And you won't hear a sound You'll awake and wonder what the time is It's only 10 That was uh, Grown from uh, last year's Song Timber, our Song in a Month challenge that we do each and every year here on uh, Studio Live today. We'll take a short break and uh, we'll be back. Things seem to actually be working. So hopefully everything's going to go to plan. Uh, let's, uh, let's present my screen. So all I did was literally uh, unplug it and plug it back in and uh, as you'll now be able to see like a magic we have logic pro ready to rock and roll so we'll actually be able to do <laughs> some uh, some real music creation in just a jiffy so uh, that's coming up next if you're bored of just listening to old man john's rant and yell at clouds then that uh, will be uh, will be good to go
uh, walking too fast for a grown ass man, I know, right? That was that was so much fun doing that. I did a video behind the scenes of it, and yeah, as, as you probably would have picked up, I just um I, I played it at a quarter of the speed, but it's really hard to walk and mouth along to something at a quarter of the speed. It's really it takes a really long time to do that sort of stuff, uh, and uh, yeah, because it was only a, what's it, a two minute thirty second song, but I had to walk along for ten minutes doing that in public, making a fool of myself, but don't really care about, uh, don't really care about making a fool of myself. Here's a great question from Rockin' Pneumonia. Are there any issues releasing traditional songs like old Christmas carols on DistroKid? They're technically covers, but not under copyright and often don't have a named writer. So, there is something about this on DistroKid. I've got to remember their exact wording of it. Short answer is yes, you can do it. It's not a cover if it's a traditional or a, an out of copyright sort of song. Um, but you have to be really careful because some that you think are not actually are. They're actually written by someone. So yeah, it, the, 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 I think the reason that DistroKid say, we well, don't really want to touch this is that it's... It, um, it's a slippery slope and some people just assume that something is not a copyrighted song and then they go back in so weirdly there was a thing uh, you know the song how much is that doggy in the window if you think of that you'd think oh that's 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 an old nursery rhyme like i could totally do a a metal cover of how much is that doggy in the window yeah, no, not so much. It was actually recorded in like 1956 and was literally a song on the charts. The 50s were weird, man. And the, the artist who sung it only passed away like 10, 15 years ago. So it's well and truly still within copyright. So you go and you try and record your How Much Is That Dog in the Window and uh, you're going to be in trouble. So yeah, so it's, um, I think, and it might be a good, because I know that Joe and Barry Glenn have released music with DistroKid and they do a lot of, uh, they do a lot of traditional and public domain type songs. Uh, all right. So there, there is an article here, uh, on DistroKid's help site. Uh, we will uh, post that in there. Google has a list of Christmas songs. Uh, yeah. So you could, pro you'd, you'd have to do your, your research and make sure that the, the, the ones you were doing are definitely not in the public domain. I've, I've just posted the link to this DistroKid support article over here. As you can see, it's not a it's not a simple thing. Uh, any song or music uh, published 20, 1922 or earlier is in the public domain of the USA. As long as there's no copyright, it's probably okay, but public domain can be a tricky issue. And then it goes into a whole lot of stuff there about what's important, what's not important. If it's not old traditional song and you're not sure about it, you need to do some research. Uh, covers of copyrighted songs require a cover license. So, yeah, if it's if it's a cover song and if you find out that it's actually been released or has a copyright from someone else and it's not traditional, even though you thought it was, then uh, you will need to actually uh, get a cover license. And it does cost you $12 a year with District Kid, $1 per month per cover song. So it's an investment. But the short answer is yes. But do your research because you really don't want to get in trouble with that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, unfortunately, sometimes those sort of things can can kind of be one strike and you're out. I've got a question for you. What do you think about these Spotify changes, eh? Yeah, so I'm doing a podcast on this uh, on Saturday or Friday, for, for, sorry, Thursday. Uh, Friday for morning for me, Thursday evening. This week's podcast, I'm going to be talking about this because... If you're not aware, Spotify have come out and uh, in, in true large corporate fashion, they have announced that they are making changes, but be really non-specific about exactly what those changes are and what they'll entail. So the crux of it is, and what's got everyone's knickers in a twist, is that Spotify have said that they will be introducing a threshold for artists to qualify for getting royalties paid. And if you don't hit that threshold as a threshold as a working musician you won't get paid your royalties now is this the apocalypse that we've been expecting to come for streaming for a long time i don't know not really probably maybe the the problem i have with this is that everyone with the exception of a couple um that i'll mention in a sec but all of the videos i'm seeing are just going all in on the drama of this it's the end of the and look this happens every time when youtube had their adpocalypse and all the advertising stuff changed this happened when youtube changed their monetization where you had to join the youtube partner program you had to get a thousand subscribers and four thousand hours of watch time this happened the drama happened it happens every time and unfortunately I don't think people that, 
I don't think people understand the irony of complaining about a large company doing a thing and then you cashing in on that. So you're saying this business shouldn't be allowed, this private business shouldn't be allowed to make a decision about how its private business works. I'm going to make a video to, to try and make um, as much money by putting a really clickbaity title and talking dramatically for 20 minutes about something that's actually really simple and straightforward. So yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I get more frustrated with the reaction to things, the knee-jerk reactions and the uh, instant complaints than I do the actual things. So what is the actual thing? Let's just talk it through. So what impact will this have? So the what people are banding it about is that the definition is not clear, but we're thinking something like 200 streams. Some people have said something like a 1,000 streams. So if you're getting 47 streams on your songs, which is about what I get, to be honest, I don't think I will qualify as a working musician with what I release. So I may be one of the folks who gets the royal shaft from Spotify. The thing to remember, though, is that um, not only is that a, a small amount, but it doesn't actually work. Like people say, oh, you get 0 0.02 cents per stream. It doesn't really actually work like that. The way royalties work with anything, but with Spotify in particular, is that people pay for their monthly memberships. That all goes into a big pool. Spotify then pay all their staff and pay all their expenses and take a profit because they are now actually making a profit. There is public company uh, listed company they have to actually make a profit they're a for-profit company so they make a profit and then what's left gets divvied up based on the proportion of streams so if taylor swift has had 50 million streams and she represents 20 percent of all the streams that have happened she'll get about 20 percent of the royalties doesn't work exactly that way there's added complexity behind the scenes but that's kind of it so if you're getting 0.001 percent of all the streams then you'll get 0.001% of that pool. Now, the reason Spotify are doing this is that they've had complaints from their established artists saying the, the market's been flooded, excuse me. The market's been flooded by these independents, by these, these people that have the audacity to dare to think that they can create, record and release music. And this is the bit that pisses me off. If I'm going to get angry and dramatic about anything, this is the bit I'm going to get angry and dramatic about, which is that they're saying that oh, no, people the, the quality is decreasing so much because so many people are able to put their music out and there's no barrier to entry. There's no benchmark anymore about the quality of music. And I would argue... Welcome to a capitalist society, one, it's just how things roll, you're just going to have to deal, anyone can have a go, they're not going to be successful as you are, that's because people supply and demand, people like your music, they're going to listen to you, people don't like your music, they're not going to listen to it, and it's kind of as simple as that. So that side of it I find annoying, because they're saying, oh, we don't want that. this 5%. Let's just say that all of us independents are taking 5% of the pool and all of the rest of them are getting 95%. They're saying, no, nah, if anyone that's under 200 streams that represents that 5% of overall streaming revenue, they should get nothing and that should be re out to us real musicians. And of course, the labels are very much on board with this as well, because the more that the musicians make, the more the labels make. In fact, flip that around, because the labels get paid first. Make no bones about it, unless you're Taylor Swift and you're re-releasing all your own songs, the labels are the ones that are actually making the money. The artists are usually getting as screwed, if not more screwed, than independents. In fact, it's worse than that. A lot of artists that work for major labels, if they're not super successful, are actually in debt to their artist, to their label. So it's a lot worse. People, Every time I see someone go, oh man, I've... Uh, I've I've um I've signed with a record label. I'm like, uh oh, and they're like, yeah, they've they've given me a a, a forward. They've a, what do they call it? Like a, a grant or a bonus or forward. Um, they've given me this money, and they said I can go make a music video and I can release it. And I'm like, yeah, well, read the fine print because you're paying back every cent of that and then some before you're actually making a penny with that sort of stuff. It's uh, it's dodgy. <clears throat> the other major change that's happening is something that I uh, I actually agree with, which is that they are removing a lot of the gamification of Spotify. So the problem is that because Spotify came out and said, here's how everything works, if you get streamed for more than 30 seconds, that counts as a stream and that it's a monetized stream. So a lot of the, uh, what they call noise artists, so these are people that make um, lo-fi music, they might make relaxation music. There's, <laughs> I think the example that someone gave was there's... Uh, anti-anxiety playlists for dogs 
But here's the thing. Instead of them putting that into like a one-hour file of like one hour's worth of music or chopping it up into, you know, track lengths of five minutes, guess what the most common track length in all music released on Spotify is? I'll give, I'll give you a second while I cough to, to work it out. It's 31 seconds. Because of course it is. It's why a lot of YouTube videos are eight minutes and one second, because it means that the creator can stick some ads in the middle and uh, get more revenue. And if you're a creator that's making this noise, if you're, you're making these, um, or you're using AI to generate songs, of course you're gonna generate 31 second songs and then put them in a giant playlist and release a 50 song album, all with 31 seconds, so that people will just stream it and you're gonna get 50 royalty paydays instead of maybe 10, that would be reasonable. So they're gonna start restricting that sort of thing as well. They're also gonna crack down on a lot of the, the fake streams. Well, they're already doing this, but a lot of people that are generating fake streams are either buying them, which is usually bots or very low paid workers in developing countries, or they're part of stream teams. And I know, isn't it exciting? Let's get a stream team together, people. Let's all sit down for eight hours a day and stream each other's music so we all get paid like two cents from Spotify. But it happens and they're going to be cracking down on that as well. So uh, again, that's it. So all this drama is coming out of people I mean, yeah, you can you can be upset. You can be upset about things. You can not like the decisions made by a business, but guess what? At the end of the day, uh, they, they could choose to not pay royalties to anyone if they wanted to. Like it's, it's It is a business and they're doing it. And I guess that's what annoys me the most. It's when someone who is running a business comes out and says, oh, we've got to talk about these Spotify changes. They're so whack. They're so terrible. They're the worst thing ever. Um, I'm speaking of which, I'm just about to launch a cause. Uh, if you get in now, it's only $47 and it's $427 in value. Um, and join my mailing list and go into my sales funnel and buy my, get my lead magnet so that I can... It's like, yeah, okay, we get it, but um, don't don't come off all holier than thou because a business is trying to make a profit and then come out and go, and here's my business, I'm trying to make a profit. I don't know, I just don't like the hypocrisy of that. All right, hopping down off the soapbox and uh, we'll, we'll move on from that. Um, I don't like Spotify, I never use it. I assume you mean for artists, but uh, I never like their service at all. And that's the thing, there's alternatives, folks. Yeah, there's just like people that come at me and say, I will never use a Mac. I'm like, well, I will, that's fine, use a PC. <laughs> I will never use an iPhone, use an Android, I don't care. <laughs> so with this sort of stuff, it's like, meh, push your music out there, there's, there's Tidal, there's Deezer, there's Amazon, there's YouTube Music, there's Apple Music, there's, there's alternatives, folks. Spotify are the kings right now, but you know what? MySpace were the kings as well so kings can be dethroned so uh spotify need to watch themselves because that's probably the biggest danger that they have they're finally profitable if they screw over everyone and and no one likes them anymore and they keep putting the prices up because that's the other thing spotify put their prices up from 9.99 to 10.99 no one better than eyelid so guess what you can bet your bottom dollar they're going up to 11.99 any day now uh we'll never be monetized don't expect to make a penny just enjoy the ride the songs will disappear when i die <laughs> you know what there's, there's your black and white uh, view of that uh, they've set the bar for payments so low that if you're not uh, meeting that threshold you probably won't notice when it's gone and that's the other thing the the the, the challenge for this and for folks by the way uh, we're talking spotify here distro kid are a sponsor of this channel they're not actually related with spotify anymore for a period they uh there was a direct relationship they were part owned Spotify or owned by Spotify? Uh, not anymore. But yeah, th this will be a challenge for distributors because obviously their their bottom line is making sure that people are subscribed and releasing their music. And this could reduce the amount of people that want to release their music as well as the amount of people that are making royalties that they're withdrawing. Because as you probably know, one of the ways that uh, distributors monetize, so a distributor like District, it gives you 100% of your royalties, but there is always a payment processing fee for you to withdraw that. If less people are withdrawing, that means less payment processing fees, which means less overall revenue for distributors. So that's the other thing to uh, to think about. Darren Anderson, g'day to you, my friend. I hope you are doing well. Um, yeah, it, it is diminutive, diminutive to the independent artist, but oh, the thing is, I don't know. I, I can't get angry enough about this, and you'll you'll hear it when I go on my uh, my longer rant that I'm I'm angrier about people's hypocrisy of cashing in on the drama and not even seeing that they themselves are doing the exact same thing. 
<laughs> by leveraging a situation in order to uh, to create controversy, to create hatred, uh, instead of just going, hey, here's the thing. This thing happened, and now you get to choose what you do about it. Anyway. Um, now that I've got things working, I went on ranting too long. So why don't we spend the last 15 minutes making some music? So uh, there, there's some new things here in Logic Pro for iPad. I'm going to come out of here. We're going to start a whole new project. I'll plug the guitar in. We're just going to record ourselves. We're going to do a little eight bar challenge. If you don't know an eight bar challenge, it's where we create something cool really quickly in eight bars and just see what we can do. So I'm going to put the timer on for 15 minutes. We're going to dive in here to Logic Pro. I'm going to go to my ideas folder. I'm going to uh, hit the create project button if my uh, buttons will let me, and we're going to create something new. So we're going to dive into tracks view mode here. Let's make some quick decisions. We're just going to throw an audio track on here to start with. Now, one of the cool new features we have here in Logic Pro is we can change in our settings, our audio settings, we can set our bit depth to 32-bit float. So we're going to do that here because I'm going to use my Steinberg UR22C, which is a 32-bit interface. So this will just give us a little more headroom when we're recording. Now, let's come in here and grab an audio patch for a guitar. So we're going to tap on guitar. Let's not overthink it. Let's, um, what should we go with? Let's go with a double driven. I don't even know what this is. Let's uh, hit the, the, the preview button here. That sounds really cool. Uh, so we only want eight bars in this track here. Let's work out a tempo that we're going to actually tap along to here. So we'll grab our metronome, turn our metronome on. We will go into our tempo, and it's going to be a four on the floor kind of thing. Da, 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 da. Let's make it 118. Just a nice rock and roll tempo there if we're going to have a guitar here. Now, before we play some guitar, let's add some drummer. So we can easily and quickly do that by tapping here, going to drummer. We want like a real kind of four on the floor kind of sound here. So we'll uh, we'll come in here and we'll grab a drummer we don't use often. So why don't we go with like the the Roots? Should we go the Roots song right now? Um, maybe. Garage Rock. I don't think I've ever used Garage Rock drummer. So we'll come in here. Is this just Kyle? I don't know. That's a cool beat. Let's just go with the absolute bait. Yeah, we're just going to go with that because, again, it's an eight-bar challenge. We're going to do it real quick. So uh, let's uh, let's grab ourselves our guitar here, and we'll set up the track here by going into our little channel here. So if you tap on that button, you get your little channel fader here. We'll tap the top here. We'll make sure that our Steinberg input is on input two. That's where my guitar is plugged in. And we'll come, we'll come on back from there. And uh, we will also come into our settings. It's been a while since I'm using this. I'm going to customize the track header. I just want to turn on my input monitoring button here so that I can actually quickly and easily turn my inputs on and off. So if I grab my guitar, and if we turn input on, and if the uh, gods are happy, we are ready to play. Let's, uh, let's turn this up so that we can hear it a little better in our mix here. And uh, we'll we'll do, actually, we've got to tune our guitar, don't we? So we'll go to our guitar tuner. By the way, if your tuner's not showing here for your guitar, you uh, you need to actually add it. You need to come into your settings, your control bar, and actually add the tuner. It's here under your modes for some reason. So make sure you put your tuner in there. Let's give it a quick tune. In fact, let's go drop D. By the time I work out logic, I'll be dead. Well, you want to tune in to what I'm doing next, which is going through the whole Logic Pro manual. Maybe in one video. I'll do like a... I'll do like a 20-hour video of just Logic Pro. Um, so we'll go out of the tuner there. We've got the ability here to now go... Let's just play some sort of cool drop D grunginess. Uh, we'll hit record and see what happens. All right, there we go. We've got a couple of sounds in there. Uh, we'll just play this back here to make sure it's sounding okay. That's pretty cool. Oh, 
What do you reckon? I reckon that's pretty gnarly. Uh, let's add another guitar because I'm, I'm enjoying uh, holding the guitar. So the eight-bar challenge, I normally go eight bars and uh, eight tracks. So that's going to be my maximum. And you've got to do it fast. If you don't do it fast, it doesn't count. So let's uh, duplicate that track, in fact. We are going to duplicate it. And the cool thing is it won't necessarily make something that is amazing you're going to keep forever, but you might just sort of find a different tone that you've never played around with before. So, for instance, I'm going to come here and just find a random guitar tone here. Uh, instrument patches. We will just search guitar. Oh, where are we? Midtown. Oh. What is this? Then? So it's playing it on twice. Uh, we'll come back to here. Audio patches is what we want. That's why it wasn't working for me. Uh, elephant in the room. Well, that's fuzzy good. That's fuzzy and good. Let's throw this on there. All right, let's play. Let's um let's play a little bit up here to go along with that. Uh, doing the same thing. Two, three. Hold it off. <laughs> that wasn't super good. Let's hear it in the mix. No, I don't like that. Here's a cool thing. When you don't like something, just get rid of it. Just undo it. Command Z. Command Z. Command Z. Whatever you want to call it. I think we need it to sort of hang out on a note here a little bit more. <laughs> That's a bit more fun, isn't it? All right. Um, I don't have time to plug in the bass. So I just want I want a bass sound that's kind of like that. So let's just duplicate out the track and we'll um, play in a bass. I think I got the part there. Undo it. Go to the start. Try it again. <laughs> Too much fun. Let's um let's change the tone there to a bass tone though. So if we come to guitar over in the top left here, we can tap that one and we can type bass and it'll give us some bass sounds here. What if we go with like a tanked bass? Razor raise bass. Yeah, let's bring that in here and make it that instead. So we've got like a nice low down sound. <laughs> All right, and I'm hearing these guitars, so we've got our chugs down the middle. I'm hearing these, uh, the, the high ones on... Actually, no, we'll leave that one down the middle. We'll pan this one to the left. And here's why the this little option here. I love having this up, because you can really quickly access, like, your pannings over here. So I'll pan that one, and we'll pan this one to the right, give ourselves this wall of guitar separation that should sound cool.
cool stuff. Uh, yeah, Mark's got it. Let's do a synth for a melody. Let's play in a nice cool sort of synth melody sound here. We'll go to our uh, MIDI. Probably don't want a horn. <laughs> So we'll come out here. We'll go to our instrument patches. Uh, is there one actually called Wailing Synth? That could be fun. Let's just uh, close that off. Da -da -da -da. How are we going on time? Got six minutes? We'll create something. Wailing Synth. Nope. I was hoping there'd be something actually called that, but we'll just uh, we'll X that. We'll grab Synth, and we need a Synth lead. So we need a cool Synth lead. Let's come down here. Oh, you got, you got this cool... That'll do. It gotta be quick here, eh? No, I think we need more of like a I need to go up higher. Something more like that, I reckon. Let's undo that one. Go back to the start of the track. Oop, didn't count myself in properly there. One, two, three, four. Didn't play that well, so let's just repeat that for the second time. <laughs> let's um, just uh, loop that out because we're low on time. Uh, we're not gonna... Cool. Maybe we'll uh, we'll probably can that afterwards. Let's uh, drop our play surface down here. So we've got ourselves something funky going on here. Let's quantize this. I <laughs> kind of like the, the bit at the end. Uh, where's the microphone? Let's uh, let's finish off with this. Uh, so, yeah, so some of the cool things uh, that we have here that I didn't really show here. We've got the split view that you can use in Logic Pro now, which is cool if you're bringing in samples and sounds, which I kind of meant to do. Um, uh, which, so if you want to use that, you just come up to the top here, tap on that one, and go split view. And then you can, say, bring in your, your files here. And you can actually bring stuff across. Um, do I have any samples that I could just bring in for this? <laughs> Not really. Not off the top of my head. But it's a cool way because uh, we can do that. We'll just close that off. Go back to Logic Pro. So you can drag things in. You can drag multiple things in, which makes life easier. Let's grab our microphone and let's finish by doing uh, something funky here. Let's do something with a really weird sound. We'll go to audio and uh, we will take a guitar away from there. We'll go voice. And we want something really weird, something really processed. So like some modulation effects or something uh, with a vocoder. All right. What about robot harmony? Let's see what robot harmony is all about. We'll throw this on our track. And uh, again, we need to set our track this time. We need it to be input one, which it is. Cool. And we'll turn on our monitoring. Jo what? What? All right. Let's uh, see if we can record. <laughs> Let's see what's been recorded on here. All right, solo it. All right, maybe that's a bit of a ridiculous effect. Let's go the undertow. This could be interesting. What is this going to do? <laughs> Maybe not. Why don't we just put uh, modulation? Let's put some modulation vocals on here. Let's just make it like uh, 
more of an actual vocal sound. Let's bring this all together. There you go. We only had time here for uh, six tracks, and uh, there's a uh, there's something here. It's it's fun to play. Yeah, I'm thinking the synth probably doesn't work there. The one final thing we have here, because we are at the uh, the 15 minute mark here, I wanted to just show you that we now have, if we wanted to master this track, we can jump down here to our Mastering Assistant plugin. It's right here. The way to get to this is to tap this button here and then hit the Mastering option. It's then going to analyze our track. Goodness knows what it's going to do when it's analyzing this track. And it's going to give us some uh, suggestions with how we want. <laughs> it sounds like me when I'm drinking. Yeah, I know. It's it's kind of, it's a bit of a bit of drunk John's sound there. Thank you, Darren Anderson. Yes, it is, it is rad. Let's, um, it's rad. We're bringing it back. All right, now we can go into our mastering by tapping there, tapping on the mastering assistant. Here it's suggested some EQ changes and it's gone transparent. I want this to have like the the valve sound, I think, here, just to give it a little bit more of a, a sort of analog uh, feel. So here's what it sounds like now with its mastering applied. It's actually turned it down. <laughs> I must have really been over the top there because it's uh, when I bypass it, it actually sounds better. <laughs> but go figure. Let's just turn the loudness up to 11. Let's really crush this. Good times indeed. So yeah, look, I'm, I'm getting more familiar. So the reason I wanted to do this here today is that I usually use GarageBand when I'm doing sort of just song ideations, just throwing something down and seeing what sticks. Because I've always found Logic Pro a bit too clunky for that. I think with a lot of these sort of enhancements and quality of life stuff here, now that I know how to use the the, um, the monitoring properly, uh, that you can just easily, quickly come in here and change your inputs and your outputs right there on your track. And uh, understanding more about audio patches and instrument patches and how they work here, you actually got a whole lot of extra things in here. And I uh, haven't even played around with things like the Beats uh, sequencer and other things that we could add in here. So, yeah, plenty of fun things in Logic Pro for iPad. If you want to learn more about it, uh, there's a heap of videos that you can check out right here on the channel. That is uh, going to do it for this week's show. I did want to tell you one more thing before we finish up here, and that is... Oh, by the way, um, I, I didn't finish my thought on this one. Down in the description, Damien Keys uh, has his Spotify video and I actually like Damien. Uh, he, even though he does, even though he does sell something, he's, he talks about his course in that video, uh, his mastering academy, uh, sorry, his, his music academy. He, he's a good dude. Like he, he, he tells it like it is, but he's, he's low drama. He's, he's just like, this is the decision. This is what it is. This is what you have to do. If you're an artist, you need to consider these things. So I, I would recommend checking that one out down below. The other thing is, if you search my name, Pete John's Gear Chat, we've got ourselves, our very first, our first annual Gear Chat Live going down on Black Friday, which is a Saturday morning here in Australia. It's going to be a Friday evening in uh, in London town and in the Euro and UK regions and uh, Friday afternoon. So grab your Thanksgiving leftovers and hang out with me for the afternoon and the evening because we're going to be going probably three, four hours. We're going to be talking all things gear, what you need, what you don't need, how you connect your stuff to your other stuff. We'll be scouring the internet for good deals on good gear, uh, including what I... So here's the thing. I don't recommend that you just, you know, go out and buy a bunch of stuff you don't need. But Black Friday's a great time. They often have like 25% off guitar strings, 50% off cables. Like there's a heap of good deals on the stuff you'll need to buy anyway for the next year. So why not stock up on the essentials? And uh, that's what I'll be doing, jumping over there. So I'm going to uh, throw a link here in the chat for you if you would like to jump on over. 
and uh, join me for that one. And uh, for my Australian friends, it'll yeah, it, it'll be Friday morning. Uh, sorry, Saturday morning. So uh, and yeah, for our friends over in the US, uh, it's US Thanksgiving, and then of course the big Black Friday sales and Amazon and Sweetwater, and we'll be checking out all the places. It'll be a lot of. A lot of fun, you know, we, we, we don't take ourselves too seriously, we kind of do it a bit home shopping network style, so we'll, we'll have some fun with that. That's going to do it for this one, uh, please check out the, the 200th episode coming up with myself and Patrick, you'll be sent over there so you can set yourself a reminder straight at the end of this show, but until next time folks, please be kind to yourself, be kind to others, keep creating, and I'll see you next time here on The Garage Band Weekly, bye for now. Woo! Rock on.